E-2 Hawkeye, the untold story of America's winning weapon. At the height of the Cold War, the United States Navy faced a new and complex challenge. Soviet bombers, armed with long-range missiles and submarines equipped with cruise weapons, threatened to strike carrier groups before they could launch their aircraft. Traditional radar systems mounted on ships were powerful, but they were limited by the curvature of the Earth and the vast distances of the ocean. The Navy needed an airborne radar platform that could extend the eyes of the fleet far beyond the horizon. From this urgent requirement came the E-2 Hawkeye, an aircraft that would redefine naval warfare and remain indispensable for more than half a century. The Hawkeye was not designed to drop bombs or fire missiles. Its mission was more subtle but far more decisive. It was created to detect threats before they could be seen, to manage the flow of battle, and to orchestrate the actions of other aircraft. When it first entered service in the 1962nd, many doubted whether such a complex command and control aircraft could function reliably from the deck of an aircraft carrier. Yet over time, the E-2 would prove to be one of the most important assets in American naval aviation. The origins of the Hawkeye trace back to 1956, when the Navy began the Advanced Tactical Aircraft Program. Engineers wanted a compact but powerful airborne early warning system that could replace the piston-driven E-1 tracer. The challenge was formidable. The aircraft had to be small enough to operate from carriers, yet powerful enough to carry a large radar dish and a crew of specialists. Grumman Aircraft won the competition, and by 1960, the first prototype took to the skies with its distinctive 24-foot rotating radar dome mounted above the fuselage. The early years were not easy. The initial E-2 Ampere models suffered from underpowered engines, unreliable electronics, and frequent mission failures. In fact, the problems were so severe that some within the Pentagon questioned whether the program should be canceled. But the Navy insisted on continuing development. By 1967, the improved E-2B entered service with more reliable systems, and soon after the E-2C introduced a modern radar capable of tracking hundreds of targets simultaneously. It was this perseverance that allowed the Hawkeye to evolve into the command center of the fleet. The Cold War quickly demonstrated why the Hawkeye was needed. Soviet Tuesday 95 Bear bombers routinely tested American carrier defenses, flying long-range missions over international waters. Without airborne early warning, those bombers could have approached within striking distance before being detected. With the E-2 overhead, carrier strike groups gained an additional 200 miles of radar coverage. Naval historian Norman Polmar described the Hawkeye as the aircraft that bought the fleet time, time to launch interceptors, time to maneuver, and time to survive. During fleet exercises in the North Atlantic and the Pacific, Hawkeyes controlled intercepts against Soviet aircraft, often vectoring F-4 Phantoms and later F-14 Tomcats to intercept before hostile aircraft reached missile release range. These scenarios proved the concept of airborne battle management. The E-2 was not just a radar platform. It was a flying command post that could direct fighters, coordinate with ships, and integrate with national intelligence networks. One of the earliest combat uses of the Hawkeye came during the Vietnam War. Operating from carriers in the Gulf of Tonkin, E-2 Second managed complex air operations involving hundreds of sorties per day. They coordinated search and rescue missions, guided strike aircraft through difficult weather, and provided early warning of North Vietnamese MiGs. Pilots who flew strike missions in Vietnam later recalled that hearing the calm voice of a Hawkeye controller in their headset often meant the difference between a safe return and disaster. The effectiveness of the Hawkeye grew even more evident in later decades. During the 1982nd, the aircraft played a central role in intercepting Libyan fighters over the Gulf of Sidra. On multiple occasions, E-2 crews detected enemy aircraft long before they approached American strike groups, allowing F-14 Tomcats to maneuver into position and score decisive victories without warning. Analysts noted that these engagements were not simply about superior fighter performance, but about superior information, and the Hawkeye was at the center of that equation. 
By the time of Operation Desert Storm in 1991, the E-2C had matured into a fully networked command and control hub. Hawkeyes directed hundreds of coalition aircraft over Iraq and Kuwait, de-conflicted crowded skies, and warned of incoming threats. According to retired Admiral William Owens, the success of Desert Storm was built on information dominance, and no aircraft contributed more to that dominance than the Hawkeye. It coordinated the suppression of enemy air defenses, guided tankers, and ensured that strike packages arrived on target at the right moment. Perhaps the most underappreciated role of the E-2 during Desert Storm was its ability to prevent fratricide. With dozens of nations flying in close proximity, the risk of friendly fire was high. Controllers aboard the Hawkeye used real-time radar data and communications links to prevent accidental engagements. Many air crews credited the platform with saving lives, not through weapons, but through awareness. The post-Cold War era brought new missions for the Hawkeye. In the Balkans, during the 1992nd, it directed NATO air operations, while over Afghanistan after 2001, it became the airborne nerve center for managing surveillance drones, strike aircraft, and helicopters in mountainous terrain. Its endurance allowed it to orbit for hours, linking assets that otherwise could not coordinate with each other. One Air Force officer commented that in joint operations, the Hawkeye was the glue holding the air picture together. In maritime security operations, E-2 Second have tracked smugglers, pirates, and even provided command and control for humanitarian missions. Their ability to integrate sensors and distribute information in real time has made them essential not only in combat, but also in disaster relief. After the 2004 Indian Ocean tsunami, Hawkeyes flying from carriers, directed helicopters, and supply aircraft to remote coastal villages, proving their utility far beyond combat. Technological evolution has kept the aircraft relevant. The latest E-2D Advanced Hawkeye features the APY-9 radar, a system capable of detecting stealth aircraft, cruise missiles, and even small targets at sea level. It has modern communications, allowing it to act as a gateway between Navy aircraft, ground forces, and allied partners. Engineers describe the E-2D as not only a sensor but also a network node, critical for the Navy's vision of distributed maritime operations. Experts argue that, in an era of rising tensions with China and the Pacific, the E-2D may be more important than ever. Chinese anti-ship ballistic missiles and long-range bombers pose threats similar to those of the Soviet Union decades ago. The difference is that modern threats arrive faster and in greater numbers. With its radar dome scanning hundreds of miles, the Hawkeye provides the carrier strike group with the warning time needed to survive in the contested waters of the South China Sea.